Hello my friends and welcome back to the You Can Do TV channel. Open die forging is a process where a metal workpiece is shaped by hammering or pressing between flat or contoured dies that do not enclose the material. Unlike closed die forging, the metal can flow freely except where it contacts the die. This process is used for large components and allows for the forging of parts weighing between a few kilograms to several hundred tons. In open die forging, large workpieces are heated to between 1,100 degrees Celsius and 1,250 degrees Celsius, depending on the material, typically steel, aluminum, or titanium. The forging process is performed on hydraulic presses that apply forces between 1,000 and 16,000 tons. The forging equipment can handle large workpieces that are often between 1 and 10 meters long. One common operation in open die forging is drying out, where the workpiece is lengthened and its cross-section reduced by successive hammering. Upsetting is another technique, where the workpiece is compressed to increase its diameter. Open die forging allows for dimensional adjustments in steps of millimeters, achieving tight tolerances. Typically, open die forging can produce shafts, flanges, and rings with diameters up to 5 meters, like those used in aerospace, energy, and heavy machinery industries. For instance, rotor shafts for turbines are made by open die forging due to the process's ability to align the grain flow with the direction of stress, enhancing strength and toughness. This method is well suited for custom or low volume production, and while the material yield is high, the process requires skilled operators to manually control the forging operations. Large diameter seamless steel tubes are widely used for transporting natural gas and water, or for urban construction as an important construction material due to their excellent sealing property and weight carrying capacity. These pipes are made from high quality steel, ensuring minimal impurities. During production, high purity oxygen is blown into an electric furnace to react with elements like carbon, phosphorus, sulfur, and silicon. This process reduces carbon content and removes impurities, improving the steel's quality. The heat generated by oxidation maintains the necessary temperature for smelting, which shortens the production time and enhances the steel's overall properties, making it ideal for demanding applications. Forging a 12-inch T involves a specialized process designed to shape pipes into T joints. First, the pipe is heated to a high temperature to make it malleable. Once heated, the pipe is partially immersed in water. This selective cooling controls the metal's temperature, allowing specific areas to remain workable while others maintain rigidity. Afterward, the pipe is positioned onto a forging die which is designed to mold the metal into the desired T shape. The upper and lower dies apply controlled pressure to form the T. This pressure forces the metal to flow into the die cavity, ensuring precision in shaping and sizing. The forging process enhances the mechanical properties of the T, improving its strength and durability for high pressure applications. By utilizing this method, the 12 inch T is forged with a seamless structure ensuring high integrity and resistance to deformation. Great Drill Bits is one of the largest PDC drill bit manufacturing company in Asia, specializing in the design, production, and sales of PDC bits, tricone bits, and other downhole drilling equipment.
The steel body PDC bits are made from special alloy steel, chosen for its strength and toughness, which adheres to the IC standards. The machining of these bits is performed using advanced CNC machining centers from Japan and Germany. These centers allow for precise bead welding and the incorporation of imported hardening materials along with spherical carbide particles. This process strengthens the abrasion, corrosion, and impact resistance of the bits, significantly extending their operational life in challenging downhole conditions. The matrix body PDC drill bits, another key product, are made using the latest patented carbon tungsten material formula. These bits undergo a 3D complex surface design process to enhance their precision and physical properties. The facility manufactures tricone bits and various other downhole tools. The tricone bits are produced using high precision equipment to machine the axis diameters with superior surface quality and accuracy. Advanced 5 axis machining centers ensure a machining precision of 0.005 mm for critical drilling and reaming applications. The company also produces coring drill bits, double core drill bits, roller cone cutters, PDC reamers, and hole openers. The production of welded and seamless butt weld fittings, particularly for high performance industries such as nuclear power plants, involves advanced techniques that ensure durability, precision, and adherence to stringent quality standards. These fittings, available in a wide range of sizes up to 60 inches diameter and in various wall thicknesses and materials, are essential for applications requiring high mechanical strength and corrosion resistance. The production process integrates both cold forming and hot forging technologies, depending on the type and size of the fittings. Cold forming tees production. Cold forming tees involves shaping materials without heating them to extreme temperatures. This method is particularly effective for creating tees with consistent thickness and mechanical properties, especially in sizes up to 16 inches diameter. The process begins with a section of pipe that is cut to the required length. The pipe is then pushed through a hydraulic press with specially designed dies that force the metal into the shape of a tee. This method allows for precise control over the dimensions and mechanical properties of the final product, ensuring the integrity needed for mission-critical applications, such as fittings for nuclear power plants. For larger fittings, such as seamless hot-forged mandrel elbows up to 56 inches diameter, hot forging is used to create a product that can withstand high pressures and temperatures. The forging process involves heating the metal to a high temperature, typically above its recrystallization point and then using a mandrel to form the desired shape. To achieve complex shapes and large diameter fittings, gas mandrel and large dimension induction bending machines are used. These machines can handle large diameters up to 120, with a maximum working force of 1,800 tons. The induction bending process uses electromagnetic induction to heat the material, typically up to 850 degrees Celsius, enabling it to be shaped with minimal stress and distortion. The bending machine's heating capability allows it to process up to 11.5 tons of material per hour. The large induction bending machines, with dimensions of up to 66.5 meters in length and 7 meters in width, are designed for the production of large radius bends up to 56 inches in diameter. Cold formed elbows in stainless steel and special alloys. For smaller fittings, 
particularly those made from stainless steel and special alloys, cold forming is used to produce elbows up to 16 inches in diameter. This method relies on mechanical pressure to shape the metal, ensuring high precision and a smooth surface finish without the need for welding. Cold forming also preserves the material's mechanical properties, making it suitable for high corrosion environments, such as those found in the chemical or nuclear power industries. Seamless and welded large radius bends. Large radius bends, whether seamless or welded, are crucial components for piping systems that require gentle directional changes over long distances. The induction bending process is typically employed for these fittings, which can be as large as 56 inches in diameter. This process creates smooth, large radius curves without compromising the structural integrity of the material, making them ideal for applications in high-pressure environments such as refineries, power plants, and pipelines. In the flange's production process, the stainless steel is heated to the ideal forging temperature to make it malleable. The forging process begins with initial shaping through open die forging, where a hammer and anvil are used to compress the material. Punching is then employed to create bolt holes or other necessary openings in the flange. Open die forging is then employed, using a hammer and anvil to roughly shape the flange. This is followed by roll forging, which further refines the shape, ensuring a consistent cross-section and improving the steel's mechanical properties. CNC machining is used in the final stage to achieve high accuracy in the flange's dimensions, ensuring precise tolerances and smooth finishes. Pipe fabrication is a highly specialized process that involves cutting, welding, and assembling metal pipes for various industrial applications. The first step in pipe fabrication is cutting the raw pipes to the desired lengths. This is often done using automated plasma cutting tables, which are pre-programmed to execute precise cuts. Once the pipes are cut, the edges are carefully prepared to ensure a clean, consistent surface for welding. Next is the welding process, which plays a critical role in pipe fabrication. Various welding techniques are used depending on the specifications of the project, such as RMD, regulated metal deposition, and submerged arc welding. RMD is preferred for root passes, while pulse welding is used for filler and cap passes. Submerged arc welding, known for its high speed and quality, is frequently employed for thick-walled pipes. Welders follow carefully developed and qualified procedures, like those compliant with API 1104, which governs welding for pipelines and related facilities. Certified welding inspectors ensure that every weld meets the required specifications by closely monitoring the process and conducting pre-welding reviews. Positioners are used throughout the fabrication process to rotate the pipe sections, allowing the welders to roll the joints instead of welding them in fixed positions. This rolling process improves both the speed and quality of the weld, as it reduces the chances of weld defects that are common when welding in less accessible areas. Once the welding is completed, the joints undergo thorough inspections, including non-destructive testing, NDT, to check for defects. Inspectors check alignment and measurements to ensure the final product adheres to the project specifications. In some cases, pipes are fitted with special coatings to protect them from corrosion and enhance durability, 
particularly in outdoor or harsh environments. This steel coil screen opening site is facility where coiled steel is uncoiled, flattened, and cut to size. The process begins with placing the steel coil on an uncoiler machine. The coil is gradually unwrapped and fed into a straightening machine to remove any bends or imperfections. Next, the flattened steel sheet is passed through a leveling machine for precision thickness control. Once leveled, the sheet is cut to the required dimensions using either a slitting machine for narrow strips or a shearing machine for full sheets. The cut pieces are stacked and prepared for further processing or delivery. The steel truck wheel manufacturing industry in China is a key segment within the country's expansive automotive and steel sectors. Known for its large-scale production capacity and competitive pricing, China dominates the global market for steel wheels, especially for commercial vehicles like trucks. The country boasts a combination of advanced manufacturing processes, high-grade steel resources, and an extensive network of suppliers, enabling it to produce wheels that meet international standards for safety and durability. Production Capacity China's steel truck wheel industry is highly concentrated, with several major manufacturers leading the market. Companies like Zhengxing Wheel Group, Shandong Shengtai Wheel, and Jiangsu Xingmen Wheel are among the largest players. These manufacturers produce millions of truck wheels annually to meet both domestic demand and export requirements. For example, Jiangxing Wheel Group, one of the largest in China, produces around 20 million wheels per year, a significant portion of which are steel truck wheels. In 2022, China produced over 45 million units of steel truck wheels, a figure that highlights the industry's massive scale and its ability to meet the growing global demand. Technology and Manufacturing Process The steel truck wheel manufacturing process in China utilizes advanced machinery, including automated presses, robotic welding, and laser cutting systems. The production begins with steel sheet rolling, where high-strength steel is formed into wheel rims using multi-stage rolling and welding processes. The welded seams are subjected to stringent quality checks, including X-ray inspection and ultrasonic testing to ensure structural integrity. After the rim is formed, the wheel disc, often made from a steel blank, is stamped into shape using hydraulic presses with capacities of up to 10,000 tons. The disc is then welded to the rim using precision robotic welders, which ensure uniformity and strength at the joint. The wheels are then heat treated to improve toughness, followed by a series of finishing operations including painting and electroplating to prevent corrosion. Many of the leading manufacturers have invested heavily in automated production lines, resulting in high throughput and consistent quality. For instance, Jiangsu Xingmen Wheel has implemented robotic assembly lines that allow for the production of up to 10,000 wheels per day with minimal human intervention. These advancements in automation help reduce production costs, enabling Chinese manufacturers to offer competitively priced products. Market and Export China is not only the largest producer but also one of the leading exporters of steel truck wheels. In 2022, the country exported nearly 12 million steel truck wheels, valued at around $1.5 billion. Key export markets include the United States, Europe, Southeast Asia, and Africa. 
Chinese manufacturers have built a reputation for producing reliable, cost-effective products that comply with international safety standards. Despite the global competition, China's ability to source high-quality steel domestically gives it a significant advantage. Steel prices in China are generally lower than in other parts of the world due to the country's vast steel production capacity, which exceeds 1 billion ton per year. This abundance of raw materials allows manufacturers to maintain lower production costs. Rudimentary rolling technology in India for producing steel rods primarily involves basic and cost-effective equipment. The mills operating with this technology are typically small-scale, often located in semi-urban and rural areas, catering to local construction needs. These mills utilize simple reheating furnaces, roughing stands, and rolling machines that are often outdated compared to modern industrial standards. Despite the basic setup, they remain vital in supplying steel rods for low-budget infrastructure projects. The process begins with steel billets, which are heated in manually operated or semi-automated reheating furnaces. These furnaces often have thermal efficiencies below 25 to 30 percent, leading to high energy consumption. The heated billets are then passed through a series of rolling stands, usually consisting of two stand or three stand configurations, that gradually reduce the billet size into the desired diameter for steel rods. These steel rods are typically produced in sizes ranging from 8 mm to 32 mm, often with minimal precision or surface finish quality due to the lack of advanced control systems. Production capacities in these mills are modest, ranging from 10,000 to 30,000 tons per year, with rolling speeds between 2 to 5 meters per second. Additionally, the use of outdated gearboxes and motors leads to frequent breakdowns, affecting production consistency. Labor is heavily involved in these mills, with minimal automation, resulting in lower overall efficiency. However, the low capital investment and minimal operational costs make these mills viable for meeting local demand in areas with limited access to high-tech industrial facilities. While this technology is slowly being phased out with the introduction of modern rolling mills, it continues to serve a niche in India's vast steel production landscape. The forged T manufacturing process begins by cutting steel billets to the required length using a saw. The cut billet is then heated in a furnace to a high temperature around 1200 degrees celsius 2192 degrees fahrenheit to soften the material making it more malleable for forging once the billet reaches the desired temperature it is placed into a closed die that contains cavities shaped like a t a high pressure forging press applies force to deform the billet causing the heated steel to flow and fill the die cavity forming the t shape this method produces a high strength seamless t essential for applications in industries like oil and gas, chemical, and power generation.
After the tea is forged, the ends of the tea are drilled to create openings for fluid flow. Drilling is done with specialized machines to ensure precision and accuracy in maintaining the correct diameter and alignment of the branch. The electric kettle manufacturing industry in China has seen remarkable growth over the last two decades. As consumer preferences for convenience appliances have surged globally, China has emerged as the leading producer of electric kettles, dominating the international market. This article provides an overview of the industry's growth, key players, market segmentation, production volumes, and technological advancements. Market size and growth. China accounts for over 70% of the global electric kettle production, making it the largest hub for electric kettle manufacturing. As of 2023, the global electric kettle market is estimated to be valued at around $4.6 billion, with China contributing significantly to this revenue. The Chinese electric kettle industry has been growing at a compound annual growth rate, CAGR, of 5 to 6% over the last few years fueled by both domestic and international demand. In 2022, it was estimated that approximately 90 million units were manufactured in China, with more than 60 million of these exported globally. The industry is highly concentrated in key manufacturing regions, including Guangdong, Zhejiang, and Jiangsu provinces, which are known for their mature supply chains and proximity to ports for international shipping. Guangdong province, especially the cities of Shenzhen and Dongguan, hosts many of the top manufacturers and contributes over 40% of the total electric kettle output in China. Technological Advancements and Product Innovation The Chinese electric kettle industry has evolved beyond the basic models and has embraced advancements in technology, energy efficiency, and smart features. The increasing demand for eco-friendly and energy-efficient appliances has pushed manufacturers to integrate advanced technologies, such as temperature control, smart connectivity via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, and rapid boiling features. Some manufacturers are producing electric kettles with energy-saving features that boil water more quickly while using less electricity. For example, Zhou Young and Maidea have introduced kettles with multi-stage temperature control settings, which allow users to heat water to specific temperatures, reducing unnecessary energy consumption. These innovations cater to consumers who want more precise control over their appliances, especially for brewing different types of tea or coffee.
In terms of materials, stainless steel and BPA-free plastics are commonly used in manufacturing to ensure durability and safety. There has also been a shift towards the use of high-quality borosilicate glass in premium electric kettles, which appeals to consumers concerned about the safety of materials that come into contact with boiling water. Domestic versus international market. While China is the world's largest manufacturer of electric kettles, a substantial portion of the production is exported. According to customs data, China exported over 60 million electric kettles in 2022, mainly to Europe, the United States, and Southeast Asia. Europe remains the largest export market, accounting for over 30% of China's total electric kettle exports, followed by the US, which accounts for approximately 20%. Domestically, the market for electric kettles in China has seen significant growth, driven by rising disposable income, urbanization, and lifestyle changes. The increase in middle-class households with modern kitchens and the shift towards healthier lifestyles have also spurred demand. In 2021, the domestic market for electric kettles in China was valued at approximately $1.2 billion, with around 30 million units sold. The Pickling Line Tandem Cold Mill, PL, TCM, at JSW Steel Limited, India, represents a significant technological advancement in the production of high-quality cold-rolled steel. This plant, located in Toranagalu Vidyanagar, Bellary, was supplied by the SMS Group and was designed to produce up to 2.3 million tons of cold strip annually in widths up to 1,890 mm. The mill became operational in 2013 and has since been supplying the automotive and other demanding industries with premium-grade steel products. Integrated Process for High Efficiency One of the core innovations of this installation is its integration of the pickling and rolling processes. The direct coupling of these two stages ensures a continuous production flow, which is crucial for maintaining both high capacity and product quality. On the entry side of the mill, two payoff reel groups are responsible for feeding the steel strip into the process, aided by a SMS group laser welder that guarantees seamless joining of the strip ends. Additionally, a tension leveler helps maintain consistent strip tension and a turbulence pickling line is employed to descale the material efficiently with minimal consumption of energy and acid. The use of turbulence pickling technology is particularly noteworthy. By optimizing the descaling process, JSW Steel benefits from lower energy and acid consumption, resulting in reduced operating and maintenance costs. This, coupled with the precision offered by the trimming shear that sets the desired strip width and straightens the edges, ensures that the entire pickling line operates with maximum efficiency and minimal waste. Advanced Mill Stand Technology In the tandem cold mill, Five six high mill stands are equipped with cutting edge CVC plus enhanced shifting system S technology, which enables precise control of the strip profile and thickness.
This technology allows the mill to handle a wide range of incoming hot strip profiles while maintaining excellent flatness and strip quality. The mill stands have also been prepared for future integration of edge drop control, EDC, a technology that ensures consistent strip thickness across the width, further minimizing side trimmings and enhancing overall yield. The six high design of the mill stands is essential for producing strips with minimal deviations in flatness. The new multi-zone cooling system installed in the final mill stand allows for even better control of strip temperature, ensuring uniform cooling and enhancing the quality of the finished product. The ability to roll down to a minimum final gauge of just 0.3 mm highlights the precision and capability of the mill. Carousel reel for continuous coiling. At the exit section, the carousel reel allows for continuous coiling of the finished strip. This design is particularly beneficial in a high capacity, continuously operating tandem cold mill like the one at JSW Steel. The carousel reel is equipped with a revolving mandrel support bearing which supports the mandrel during coiling, eliminating limitations associated with high-tension winding of high-strength strips. This innovation enhances both the operational efficiency and product quality, as it ensures uniform tension throughout the coiling process. The ability to perform continuous coiling, even with high-strength materials, represents a significant advantage for JSW steel. The improved design of the carousel reel also means that the plant is future-proofed, with the option of installing an inline inspection line at a later date. This flexibility allows the company to adapt to evolving market demands without the need for major modifications to the existing infrastructure. Auxiliary Facilities and Emission Control In addition to the main pickling and rolling equipment, the SMS Group also supplied a range of auxiliary facilities, including a coil conveyor system, coil banding machine, and exhaust systems. These auxiliary systems are critical to the smooth operation of the plant, ensuring that finished coils are handled efficiently and that emissions are kept to a minimum. The fume exhaust system, in particular, sets a world record for exhaust air purity thanks to its ability to reduce emissions at an early stage through optimized airflow conditions. The focus on environmental sustainability is evident throughout the design of the pickling line, Tandem Cold Mill. By reducing the consumption of operating media and increasing the amount of recyclable material, the plant is able to operate in an environmentally responsible manner while maintaining high levels of productivity. This commitment to sustainability is in line with JSW Steel's broader efforts to minimize its environmental impact while continuing to meet the growing demand for high-strength steel products.